like Jay Brock, cause I can score with a second on the clock. What's good, Josh? Your boy Jay Brock is clapping up LA. You know what I'm saying? And I'm right here with the homie Gutter Bracken. And ladies and gentlemen, he wants to do ratchet stuff and contribute to the streets. He is an artist who can rap and sing, mix and master his own music, and shoot his own video straight off of McKinley Avenue. Shout out to producer Papa. Many of you have heard his famous tag, Papa Got Beats Making History. And if you didn't know, I must inform you, that was a 14-year-old Gutter Bracken. And listen, and listen here, he is... Starting off 2023 off strong with Push a Rod. And ooh, if you didn't know it's about time that you going to run up his latest single right now, streaming on all platforms. Go to Bragging, how you doing today, bro? What's happening, nigga? Chilling. Don't, don't leave me hanging, dog. Oh, yeah, I ain't even see him. I ain't even see him trying to take my hands. <laughs> okay, okay, man. It's a pleasure to be chopping game with you today, bro. Um, Starting 2023 off strong, you are also a father of one year, bro. Speak on how fatherhood has affected your life, or of course it's affected your life. Speak on fatherhood, bro. Uh, shit. Fatherhood really ain't affect my life. It taught me, though. It taught me a lot of shit. It taught me how to maintain time. It taught me how to maintain my energy and how to sacrifice, sacrifice a lot of time because it's like... I'm a straight nigga for sure. That shit ain't never going nowhere, but it's like I had a daughter, so it's like I got to take care of my daughter. I don't want to be out of my daughter's life. That's right. It's like I got to move how I got to move. I got to move militant and, and very smart because it's like shit can happen in a second. Mm -hmm. Shit can happen in a minute, so it's mm -hmm. like I got to move different. I can't move the same like I was when I was a young nigga. Mm -hmm. I'm big dog now. Mm -hmm. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, fatherhood typically will do that for a lot of people. And it, and it just it just makes you, like you said, it makes you want to go home every night. You got oh, something yeah. to go home to. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So what are some of the things, because you're a, do you're a father of a daughter, what yeah. are some of the things you want to instill in your daughter in order for her to, you know what I'm saying, understand and learn as she get older? Like Nipsey Hussle, shout out to Nipsey Hussle. He said he would tell his daughter every day that she was a leader. You know, yeah. what are some of the things you want to instill in your daughter as she gets older? For sure, be a leader. Be, be your own boss. Don't let nobody tell you you can't be yourself because mm -hmm. that's like that's like failing right there that's like going for plan b when you already got a plan a you mm -hmm. can't go for plan b if you go for plan b that means you already failed your plan a mm -hmm. so it's like be your own boss at all times don't let nobody tell you you can't be you mm -hmm. for sure that's a fact that's a big one and that's great for anybody in life be you don't never allow anybody to make you feel like you can't be you that comes with confidence that comes with security and so many times in life we talk to people and they tear down our security that's why they say you can't tell everybody your plans and your dreams yeah, because yeah. you got some people who can't take that and they'll tear everything down but shout out to that so i'm a father of a three-year-old boy you know what i'm saying so yeah, yeah. raising a boy is just a little different than having a daughter, you feel me? Because my boy, he fall down and bump his head. Hey, look, I know it hurt, you feel me? I know it hurt, but I'm gonna need you to get up because yeah. it's time to be a man. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, we live in a time now where the world is so sensitive. You can't even say certain things, you can't do certain things. And it's like, you gotta understand at the end of the day, only the strong survive. Only the strong. Only the strong survive. No matter how sensitive or soft you want to be, only the strong survive. So how excited are you to be able to tell your daughter about this watermelon seed story? You know, of, of eating a watermelon seed, and if, if she eat it, it's going to expand in her stomach. Hey, what did that do to you as a kid? Hey, that shit fucked me up. I ain't going to lie. I used to be like, my, my brother told me. My mom didn't even tell me, though. My brother was like, don't eat the seed. If you eat the seed, you're going to have a watermelon growing in your stomach. Like, I ate a seed. I, I had to figure it out. I'm like, ain't no damn watermelon finna grow in my stomach, but it's gonna be hilarious telling my yeah. daughter that. Cause I already told my little brother that. Yeah. I got little brothers too, so it's like, yeah. We was already older, so I told my little brothers that joke. But me telling my daughter, it's going to be a way different It's going to be a different yeah, yeah, fact. Sure. Okay, so what is it like being the older brother having younger brothers? What type of example do you want to set for them? Shit, same example I got to set for my daughter. It's just mm -hmm. my little brothers, I don't want them being like me and my big brothers because that's where all of us fucked up at, like mm -hmm. trying, to, trying to follow our dad's footsteps and shit. But it's like... Mm -hmm. I ain't knocking this shit because it made me who I am today, but it's like, yeah. mm -hmm. I ain't gonna knock it for my little brother neither. It's like, I ain't gonna tell him not to do something because it's gonna really make somebody, like, like have you ever had that feeling like when somebody telling you don't do it, then you still go do it? That's like telling yeah. the boy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't touch that fire. He mm -hmm. gonna still go touch that mm -hmm. fire because it's like something to play with, but it's yeah. like, yeah. I'm trying to get my little brothers out of it while I can. 
Yeah, that's right. What well, they say, experience is the best teacher. And that's one thing about parenthood, too. Like, no matter how much you try to warn your kids about stuff, we didn't do stuff our parents told us not to do. Hell yeah, that's Over and over again. Looked. Exactly. We didn't do did stuff our parents told us not to do. <laughs> but I think I think what, what, what comes in it is the conscience that they raise us with. Hell Most yeah. of us, we got we got this conscience, but we just not going to do that. Yeah, like, so, but, but now, like, this is like a different generation now. So it's yeah. like, my mom is, like, different with her newer kids than with her. Her 90s babies. Oh, yeah. Come on, like man. Show, Come like, on. We didn't all seen that. She, like, a little yeah. bit more softer with her kids. So it's yeah. like, I used to get in trouble. Like, <laughs> get your ass whooped every yeah. time. Yeah. My little brothers, <laughs> they get away with so much shit. So oh, it's man. like, I got to be on them now. Yeah. So it's a different story now. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, I can't let them get away with what I got away with. Yeah. I relate. Because I seen my little brothers and sisters get away with stuff that I could never dare. I couldn't even think about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Moms would be on my ass quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? On my every time, I'm talking about every time I messed up, I'm getting a whooping about it. Hell they yeah. or they can talk back, do all they want to. She she gotta get them when they got strength. But shout out to that. And also I think that our parenting, our generation of parenting, is just gonna be different um, than, than theirs. Mm -hmm. Because we're a little less lenient because we don't we don't want all the whoopings. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We know the whoopings hurt us. Hurt us. Yeah, fact. Yeah. So it's kinda like sometimes let's just talk. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nothing wrong with that, man. So you sometimes grew up. That's a better outcome, though. So yeah, it is. It is. Discipline, whooping your kids and shit. Yeah. Sometimes it makes them like a little tougher, but it makes them want to go rebellious. Yeah, and it's like it makes you you're the cooler. I I, I did this. Yeah. Nigga, you can't tell me nothing. I did this. Yeah. It's like when you get your ass whooped, you go tell your homies. Yeah, nigga, I got my ass whooped in. You feel me? But people didn't have that situation when you had to go really go self and talk with your mom and your dad like. Yeah, yeah. Just straight to the ass whooping. Yeah, yeah. You know, my mom. Sometimes my mom would talk to me though. Yeah. But it got to a point like I ain't really listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? My mom always told me, I don't care how many friends you gonna get in trouble with, you gonna get your butt whooped. Yeah, for sure. On the real accountability. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to that, man. Now I know you grew up with this Biggie influence, of course, Snoop Dogg. Now you consider Biggie the king of ratchet. Now we all know Biggie, a smooth going guy. But what makes you feel he is the king of ratchet? Tell us that. Got a bitch suck my dick till I nut. Uh -huh. Spit it on my gut and start that shit back up. Ain't that a slut? Okay. Like, like, Straight like that. Yeah, like that, that shit was like ratchet. Me growing up though, like when I heard that shit, I'm like, damn, that shit ratchet as hell. And then like why G came out. Yeah. G came out. All you ladies pop your pussy like, like this. Met her at the club, yeah. said what's up, yeah. all that two and bullshit. Yeah. Like that shit was all yeah. ratchet, like a motherfucker. So it was like, I didn't really I jumped into that music. But I didn't because it was like I liked the, the the beats around it, but it was like I felt like I could put pain behind that beat. Yeah, yeah, for sure, so it was for like sure. I love the ratchet shit. That's my number one go to. When I'm by myself, I'm in the club. I'm in the car. Yeah. Yeah, bitch, yeah, bitch, yeah. yeah. Now it's like, yeah, bitch, yeah, bitch, yeah. So it's like I like ratchet music, but I don't prefer match ratchet music for myself. I like right. for people to hear about me. Yeah. I like for people to see what we had to go through. I like for people to see that it ain't always like sunny out here in LA. I like for people to see that it's fucking dangerous as hell, but it's like still fun to be here sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it ain't safe. It ain't a place to play though. It ain't a place to play with your life with. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Now, now the pain, now I know you have this influence with Lil Durk, right? Yeah. Lil Durk speaks a lot about his pain. Yeah, yeah. Now. You know, in this time and day and age where we have so many people who want to seem invincible, mm -hmm. it seems like they ain't never affected. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Explain what what talking about your pain has done for your fans and the people who've listened to you. Yeah, my, my pain made a lot of people come from, like, I didn't even work with artists like that's because I've been doing music for a minute now, but it's like I didn't work with younger artists like that. I ain't even that big yet, but I didn't work with younger artists like, bro, I look up to you. You're an inspiration to me, like. You made me come out of the closet, not like on no that type of shit, but you made me come out of the closet, like from being scared to say, I used to get my ass whooped. Man, I used to be scared to say my homie's dying. I used to be scared to say I went to jail and mm. all this type of shit. I made a lot of artists come out of that box. I mm. made a lot of artists really want to come from the east side. Mm. A lot of artists wasn't rapping about the east side until we started doing that shit. So yeah. it was like, you know what it is. Now, I know that you, you say that y'all you, you, are the first people to really push the McKinley Ave line yeah, um, sure. the way that y'all did. Now, I want you to speak on this because when you are the first to do anything... First bracket. When you, okay, yeah, first bracket, like you said. When you are the first to do anything, yeah. it's, 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 it's some scrutiny that come with that. It's some, it take a lot of heart. You got to yeah. do what people got to say. What are some of the things that you had to deal with knowing that we're going to push McKinley like nobody else ever did? Uh, shit. 
basically my homies, I'm from the east side, I'm from Swans, but it's like, yeah. I got homies that's from San Pedro, I got homies that's from town, I got homies that's from Bentro, I got homies that's from Maine. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all them pushed that block, but it was like, we had McKinley, we had Wadsworth, and mm -hmm. everybody skipped over those, but it was like, that's the block I grew up on. Mm -hmm. That's where my mama raised me at, so it was like, I seen niggas die on that block, I done got arrested on that block, yeah. I done got chased by the police on that block, mm -hmm. I done got shot at on that block, mm -hmm. so it was like, that's me. That's where I really was raised at. Even though my 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 block ain't even on that block, that's my block. Mm -hmm. So it was like I had to stand for that shit. Me mm -hmm. and my cousin had to stand for that shit. Mm -hmm. And even though like me and my cousin ain't even speaking right now, it's like we still stand on that shit. When it comes to it, we gonna stand on that shit together. Mm -hmm. That's right. You got a sense of pride about it. Um, now, I mean, what are some what are some memories on McKinley Ave? Give us some good memories, bro. Like some things that you know, you know, you got the ice cream truck memories. You got the icy lady, the yeah. candy lady memories. Give us some of those memories. Oh yeah, ice cream truck for sure. One, I, I got my first BB gun from the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> the ice cream yeah, truck yeah. with the BB my mama, gun. My mama was like, don't go buy that shit. I went yeah. and bought that. <laughs> Five dollars. It, it jammed on me a few times, but yeah. yeah, we was in the backyard playing. Me and my cousin, we was in the backyard playing with BB guns and. I, sh I just happened to shoot the BB gun like random and it went in his nose and got stuck. Ooh. <laughs> it didn't bleed or nothing. Ooh. It was like the little, the little, not the real pellets, it was like the little BB. Yeah, the BB, okay, the plastic BB. Yeah, so it got stuck in his nose and he blew it out with his nose. I started dying. I ain't never seen no shit like that yeah, that's, in my life. That's different. Yeah, that's that was different. Funny. And then, like, me and my brothers, we used to be like walking around. It used to be dogs on our block. So it was like, it was this corner house with a lot of dogs and we had open the gate and break from the dogs. Oh, and, man. I uh, I remember one day, I was like, me and my cousin, we was little, like 10, 11, 12 over there. And my brother's already in high school playing football. So they leaving us down the block and mm -hmm. the dogs got on our ass. We had to hop in the back of a truck. And this this truck scene just reminded me of Smokey on Friday when he was laying in the oh, back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on me I back there by the shit yeah, on himself. They had to call their dogs out yeah. the yard and shit. That shit was hilarious. See, that's different. Now, you, you hear about Ding Dong Ditch, yeah. but not Ding Dong Dog. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Y'all playing Ding <laughs> yeah, We was different. We was bad as hell. Yeah. Like, we wasn't. Ding Dong Ditch was... Some bud, like that was that was lightweight. Yeah, that was lightweight. We was doing that at like five and six. We was yeah. doing that, but as we got older, we was already like roaming the streets and shit. It was like yeah. my mom was watching us though, but yeah. I ain't even gonna say it like she wasn't watching us. But it yeah. was like my brothers was older, so when it was time for her to go go to work and yeah. shit, yeah, we was outside. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like as a parent, you won't be able to catch everything your mm -hmm. child gonna do. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But okay, so childhood. Uh, Pomona Steelers. How long did you play for the Pomona Steelers? Not that long. Not like, that long. Yeah, like two years. Yeah, okay. Well, shout out to the Snoop League. I played for the demos, played against the Pomona Steelers. Yeah. Only Snoop's team was really good. Like, everybody else was kind of hey, checked. It wasn't even that good. It was just. Oh, okay. Hey, hey it is. Pay the reps. Oh, man. They know what it was. Oh, no. He said pay the reps. Ooh, wee, that's not good. They knew it, <laughs> that's not good. You weren't supposed to say that. I played for the, played for the Compton Titans, too. When okay, it, you played for Compton. Before it was uh, the Compton Vikings, I played yeah. for the Compton Titans, too. But I played like they flag league. I was like little as hell. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, I played against Compton Vikings. It was Stones, not the Vikings, you know, the um, Titans. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, that, the it was Vikings, the Do you know Coach Wadu? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah shout out to Uncle Wadu, man. Shout out to Uncle Wadu. Yeah, I actually played on Snoop Dogg All Star team. We was practicing. Yeah. at Compton High. You yeah. feel me? Went to Miami, man. That whole situation was crazy. But shout out to that, man. So speaking of your big brother, you would start rapping at 13 years old. You said your brother used to write songs every day, right? Yeah, my brother Gunner, mm -hmm. he still writes songs. He out. Uh, he out of jail now, but uh, he's about to go sit down and do some more time. But uh, mm -hmm. he was like a heavily influence on me, like mm -hmm. a big ass influence on me. No mm -hmm. cap. It was like, I see him we, he was doing jerking music, though. He was like, boom. Uh, uh, every day, I'm like, how the fuck is he doing this? I'm trying to write, and shit ain't rhyming or nothing. I'm like, just writing, just to write, writing mm -hmm. shit down. Mm -hmm. Then uh, he went he went to jail. Mm -hmm. And when he went to jail, it was like, he left his notebook at home with me. And when he left his notebook, I didn't write or rap none of his verses, but I learned from reading and shit. Like, mm -hmm. uh, how to do a bar like this, how to flip your verse into something else and then I just mastered it. I was rapping. I wasn't singing, I was really rapping. And then it was like Blueface at first, right? Nah, hell okay. no. Nah. It was like it was like gutter bragging. Oh okay. For sure. For <laughs> sure. Gutter bragging. Yeah. But uh no disrespect to Blueface, great artist. Um, yeah, no, nah, he just him. That's it. <clears throat> we we respect that. But uh 
yeah, I was like a young nigga. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was doing my thing because I was a young nigga. It was mm-hmm. like a young nigga movement at the mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Like like back in the top notch days and the underrated, a lot of people didn't know. Yeah, about see, that. that's the jerking days. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't jerking days. It was 2013. Was young Sam was the jerking days. Okay, for yeah. sure, for sure. See, there was a discussion about the jerking days. Yeah. How long was that era? It was like 2006 through like 2010. 2000, yeah, 2010, 11. Yeah, yeah, somebody told me I was wrong about that. Yeah. But for sure, shout out to that. Now, um, when you now. You getting in this book, yeah. okay, sparked your interest. When was the first time you actually, like, stepped in a booth and heard? Like, when you heard yourself first record, w- were you immediately satisfied or were you kind of like, I don't really know how to feel? I was satisfied like a motherfucker. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Even though it didn't even sound that good, it was like hearing myself. I was like, I knew I could do this shit. I knew yeah. it. Yeah. I knew it. And, yeah. like, a few years down later, I heard, down the drain, I heard this shit. I'm like... The fuck this shit trash. <laughs> yeah. It's usually this. like that though. Yeah, I was doing this, but I was comparing it and comparing it and see how I really transformed. Me mm-hmm. as an artist mm-hmm. became great. Mm-hmm. How much have you been able to be proud of yourself and how far you've came? Because you're in a situation where it's only up. You feel what I'm saying? Two years. So how so so how long have you like you looked at your two like years. two years? And you look back at yourself and say, I'm proud. Yeah, two years. That's the goal. For sure. Two That's years I've been proud of myself just yeah. to seeing how hard I've been working. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of people didn't see what I had. To, I started rapping on house arrest. Mm-hmm. I started engineering on house arrest. A lot mm-hmm. of people wasn't coming to see me. Mm-hmm. My brothers was in jail. Mm-hmm. So it was like, I was the big brothers to everybody because I ain't had no big brothers. My big brothers was in jail. So it was like, mm-hmm. they was calling me, asking me for shit. So it was, I felt like the big brother, but... I was on house arrest, engineering, on house arrest, recording myself, trying to figure this shit out. And then once I figured it out, it was like everybody, my brothers came home. So it was like, they didn't really see the process. They like, oh, he learned this from me. Mm-hmm. I learned it from y'all. I didn't learn how to mix from y'all. I didn't learn how to rap from y'all, but mm-hmm. it was like, I studied from y'all. Mm-hmm. It's like. That's right, that's right. They left They left the footprints. Like they yeah, say, success sure. always leaves footprints. Yeah, so sure. um, when you get into mixing and mastering, because that's something that not a lot of people do, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, speak on the, the screw-up stuff that you've had. You know what I'm saying? How many songs have you had to, had to trash because you just did a bad job of mixing and mastering it? A lot. I, I like that he said that. I record, in my life, I recorded over 10,000 songs. Mm. Like... No cap. 10,000 hours, yeah. y'all. Come on now. Yeah, no cap. Like, over 10,000 songs. And I threw away about 8,000 of them. Yeah. And still got, like, a few of them in the vault. I never put them out, but it's like, I go off quality. I go off catchiness. Mm-hmm. And it's like, sometimes you got to be lyrical. Sometimes you don't. Mm-hmm. It's like, sometimes you still got to have fun with the shit. Don't make people like get too involved or have to go pick up a dictionary on some what that word means because right. yeah. a, a lot of people really ain't get to go to school and shit like that a lot of people ain't really pay attention in school so it's mm-hmm. like well I do all this I'm from the streets I'm from LA I need LA to hear me before I need all these other motherfuckers to hear me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well like they say if your city don't feel you then it's difficult for you to make it out mm-hmm. you know but then again it's like I haven't seen people move out the city and make it out though yeah so that's, that's true that's what, that's what I'm saying it's kind of like a fine line why do you think that's the case though like why is it some people can make it in the city and some people can't make it why do you think that is because some people be false and some people don't ah so it's kind of easier to paint a different picture if you go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Okay, easy. okay. I understand that. I understand that. I never actually processed that way, but I'm glad that you said that. Yeah, that a lot way. of people ain't yeah. got that push behind them. Yeah, yeah. What type of push would, did you have behind you to help I, you be this? I had the hood behind me, no cap. Yeah. The hood love me right now. The hood, I'm starting my hood. Yeah. Uh, I had the motivation, I had the knowledge, and I had a growing process of watching how everybody did, how they moved, like mm-hmm. how Lil Dirk moved when he was in Chicago. Mm-hmm. He moved alone and he moved like, he moved with his homies, but he moved alone. He did what he had to do for his homies, but at the end of the day, he still moved alone. Mm-hmm. YG, he he had a lot of homies around him, but he still went in his direction that he mm-hmm. wanted to go to. He didn't let nobody else tell him what to do. Mm-hmm. Me. I went in my di- direction how I wanted to do, kept the gang around, and moved how I wanted to move, and it was like very militant mm-hmm. gang. So it was like, 
So I'm still here. I ain't never been shot. Never Ooh. been. Pray to God that you never yeah, have to go to through that. Um, never been yeah, shot, though. knock on. And then also, how thankful are you for the moment when you were on house arrest? Because sometimes we go through situations, right? Yeah. And like they say, things don't happen to you. But they happen for you. Yeah, for so sure. how thankful are you for that moment on house arrest, have, making sure that you locked in? Because you were also homeschooled as well, right? Yeah. Making sure that you locked in in those periods and times. Um, I'm big thankful for it, but... I'm not thankful for it because it was like when when I was releasing music at a young age, I wasn't, I was like, it was a time when I was from a group mm -hmm. and we was we was popping, but I was the one that couldn't go outside. So I couldn't really show my ah, face. Okay. And everybody else was showing their face. And then mm -hmm. when I popped out, that group was over with. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I, I got to make my own shit and push how I got to push. Mm -hmm. Well, like you say, there are no more heroes. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I want you to give us an example of what a hero, because you know our hero ain't somebody in the cape, he ain't yeah. somebody in the Batmobile. Speak on what a hero would be and how can you be a hero for the next up and coming generation? Um, no more heroes. I released that tape because I felt like we didn't have no more people that was able to reach down and pick us up. Uh -huh. like, mm -hmm. You had Kendrick. We had YG, mm -hmm. we had Ice Cube, we had Dre, mm -hmm. but it's like the newer era artists of LA ain't really coming back and trying to do the same yeah, thing. They like, yeah, they like trying to move out and get bracking with everybody else before mm -hmm. they even get bracking with their own city. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's fucked up, but it's like, that's going to that's gonna fuck it up for us. Mm -hmm. So it's like how the Bay move, they all move together. Like mm -hmm. if you look at the Bay, you got Foley Water that's still tapping in with everybody. Facts, facts. Reaching back for sure. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So so, so, what's what's on your outlook? How can L.A. change that? How can, because really we all know L.A. is by in stop, its own way. By stop being scared to talk to talk to people because I don't give a damn where you from. If we making money, if we doing what we got to do to put on for our city, we boo. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like YG was a blood, Nipsey was a crip. Yeah. And it was like, when it, when it came to music, they was like this. When it came to street shit, they was like this. They ain't mm -hmm. let none of that shit get between them. And that was like a big ass eye to me. Mm -hmm. I seen my eyes like get like this when I seen that shit. Like mm -hmm. I seen my own eyes. Like, mm -hmm. So it was like, they could do it, I could do it. Mm -hmm. But it's like boundaries to the shit too. Mm -hmm. That's where it fucks us up at. Cause it's mm -hmm. like, we done lost homies to this shit. Yeah. But it's yeah. like, we got other artists that's cracking. Mm -hmm. Then we got other artists that's cracking mm -hmm. and we got other artists that's cracking and it's like we got artists that's bracking bracking mm -hmm. bracking <laughs> you got bracking and cracking <laughs> it's like yeah. niggas be scared to do this together so yeah. it's like it's yeah. cool but it's like y'all yeah. niggas want to make money that's what y'all gotta do you gotta let the streets get out the way of it and it's like we yeah. they got older we got older homies to tell us not to do that shit no mm -hmm. cap mm -hmm. but it's like your older homies be the main niggas in your ear. Oh, when you get this, this, and that, and that, mm -hmm. y'all still gonna look out for us, right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all like coaching us to do shit that y'all ain't really even on no more. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm -hmm. how y'all gonna tell somebody to do shit and y'all ain't even on that type of time no more? Mm -hmm. We really out here getting to it. They out here doing all type of shit. So it's like, you gotta do what you gotta do, you gotta do it, but. It's like when you wanna win, you gotta you gotta step on a different stair. That's a fact. You gotta, you gotta step up that ladder. Mm -hmm. For sure, you can't be on the same page as ten mm -hmm. years ago, twenty years ago. This is a whole new era. Mm -hmm. It's know? evolution. Hell yeah. It's evolution. You know, at some point you have to choose to grow. You have to choose to want to do better and choose to make a decision. When everybody yeah. going this way, sometimes you, you gotta, gotta go, go that way. way. That's a fact, mm -hmm. and that's how you become a leader. So when you speak, okay, let's let's talk about this. What is a leader to you? You know, what I'm saying how, how how was Gutter Bracken a leader? Uh, shit, the leader to me is you being a leader is you gotta motivate. You gotta you can't always be the front guy. Mm -hmm. Even when you're a leader, you you got if you're working with people in the group, you can't always be the front guy. Even though you know you're the the guy. Yeah, the yeah. guy. You can't all you gotta let them shine too. Mm -hmm. It's like when I drop, I like to drop alone. So when everybody else gotta drop, they got their own time to shine. I don't mm -hmm. like dropping on top of people. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie, but mm -hmm. it's like people gotta understand though. Everything ain't evolved around you. Yeah, facts, facts, facts. You yeah. gotta be evolved around everybody. So mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. When it's showtime, it's showtime, man. I feel like 
If anybody in my section was bigger than me right now, I ain't going to knock them. I ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to support it for sure. I'm going to support it. But it's like I'm not going to knock it. That's some haters. Yeah, you don't knock it. You don't knock it. One thing. That's some haters. Yeah, one, one thing about being a leader that I understand is that people may not see is that being a leader means that you're going to take that loss yeah. and you're going to keep going yeah. and you're going to deal with the loss. Sometimes, though, like shit don't even be losses. People lessons, just yeah. yeah, people just see it as a loss, and it's mm -hmm. like I it's take them lesson. as lessons. Yeah, it's a lesson. Sure. It's a lesson. Yeah, for sure. But uh, you know, okay, well, we can talk about that as a lesson, right? Yeah. Those lessons are important because it may come in a, it may come in a form of failure. Yeah. It may come in a point in, in a form of a mistake that you made to where you couldn't capitalize. Mm -hmm. It is a lesson, but it like you said, it's all about perspective. For sure, it's all about perspective. You got to put your perspective on there. Now, um, I, now here's the thing with this, right? At first, you talked about how all you made was gangbang music. Yeah. You said, I made nothing but gangbang music, yeah. but you said, I ain't going nowhere with this. Yeah. And then, you know, of course, you got the little Dirk influence. You heard YG was able, see, YG was able to do it, but YG knew how to do it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Nipsey was able to do it, he knew how to yeah. do it. Yeah. You feel sure. me? It couldn't be everything that you put out. So at what point did you realize, let me stop doing this? Two years ago. Yeah. I, uh, I released Bragging Five mm -hmm. two years ago, maybe. Three now, it's 2023, so mm -hmm. three years ago, I released Bragging Five, and it was like, I dropped a song on there that had me rapping and me doing melodic shit, mm -hmm. and people was like, asking me personally, like, why you don't sing? You know how to do it, and you know how to rap, why you don't put it together? I laughed at that shit, and was like, nah, I ain't gonna do that shit, that shit like, kind of boring to me, mm -hmm. and then, it was a point in life, well, I heard this beat, and I was in there like in my my mama my mama living room with my mic. I, I got all the studio equipment I need, but I don't use it no more. But mm -hmm. I'm in my mic. I'm like, catch him at the light. This ain't no stick up. Catch an eye flip. Fuck that he getting hit up. Mm. I'm like, damn, that shit cold. Different. And then I heard it on a beat. I, was, I turned a little bit of auto tune on and heard that. I'm like, oh yeah, this shit fire. Mm -hmm. I tried it out. The song came out fire. It became my biggest song in less than a month. It passed up all my other songs mm. that I had out for five years plus. It passed all that shit up in a month. Found it. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, I did a song for the girls called Me and You. I did that. That shit passed up hard times. Mm -hmm. And that shit's sitting there like 400K. Mm -hmm. And then I did a song after that called Slang Iron. Mm -hmm. And when I did Slang Iron, it was just like... Skyrock. Yeah, yeah, Slang Iron, yep. And that, is that the video that D3 was in and stuff? Nah, D3 okay. was on Hard Times remix. Okay, got you, got you, yeah, got you. So. Okay, yes. I see Slang Iron went crazy, bro. Now, when you jump into this melodic music, did you face any criticism behind that at all? Hell no, because I still kept that melodic music. West Coast, I, I put it... I like that. I West it, Coast, baby. Come I, on. I put it on the West Coast beat yeah. and, like, did my thing. So yeah. It was like, you hearing... hearing me mixing two things up and one and putting it together is like making me hella different because it's like he's a West Coast melodic artist. It's like you don't see that. You see a lot of rap, you see a lot of singing, but you don't see a lot of rapping and singing. Mm. So it's like I put them both together. That's right, West Coast melodic rapper.